guys, it is September the 7th, 2024, and uh, I just wanted to hop on here really quick and um, just talk about tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be putting up uh, the third installment of the talk with Slayer Sober today. There's going to be one more section uh, left in our talk. Uh, like I was saying, we had a very long conversation uh, last Sunday, and um, I'm going to hold that last section off until Monday. Um, I'm going to do a live tomorrow, and that will be at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tomorrow afternoon. Um, I'm going to be on for one hour, so it'll be from 4 to 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. I'll post up uh, you know, the live so you guys can go ahead and sign up for it or whatever. Just a reminder uh, to let you guys know that it will be tomorrow. Um, I actually uh, I spoke with David uh, from Canada uh, just the other day as well, and he's going to be in, in on the live with us too. Uh, so David will have the wrench, and um, can't wait to have David back in on the live again. Um, so tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, there will be a live. Like I said, it'll be from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock, uh, and um, I'm going to post up that uh, third section of the talk with Slayer today. Um, I will get to you guys' comments here. I'm, I've just had a lot going on today around the house. We've been trying to get a bunch of stuff done. I just have not had an opportunity yet to uh, finish replying to you guys' comments. I was up rather late last night uh, trying to reply to everybody, and um, I've just been super busy today. So I haven't forgotten about you guys. I will get to you. Um, just give me a little bit. I, I just got finished uh, outside, and I still have yet to even clean up yet. I'm filthy dirty right now. And um, I just get, got my son something to eat. So I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to get this video uploaded. And um, give me just a little while and I'll get to everybody's comments. And uh, thank you so much for watching uh, these talks with Slayer. I thought that they were like really, really interesting. Slayer is a really, really smart dude. And um, I really do appreciate him coming on and speaking with me for as long as he did. He took his whole set Sunday uh, and, and spoke with me um, like seriously we we started talking at like noon and we talked until like 8 30 that night i had a little window in there that i had to get on another zoom talk but like he seriously was uh on the phone with me or on the zoom all day long and uh slayer i really do appreciate you spending the time with me the other day thank you so much man and uh once again thank you so much to everybody else out there that's been watching i really do appreciate it um, and one more time, tomorrow there will be a live, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It'll be from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Can't wait to see you guys there. It's always a great time. I might go a little bit longer, but I just wanted to have some kind of a, you know, some sort of a schedule because, um, you know, it, it's just a weekend. Last weekend we spent it doing all kinds of stuff, going to the hospital and all that kind of it, last weekend was was crazy and um i'm just trying to spend some time with my family and get stuff done around here this weekend so anyway uh, i hope you guys enjoy this this section of the talk and like i said there will be one last section and i'm going to post that up on monday um and uh tomorrow we'll just take a break do the live video and then i'll post that last section of uh, the talk with me and slayer um, on monday and that one actually is like 35 minutes long this one's a little bit shorter i think it's like 25 minutes or something like that and then the last section is like 35 minutes. So anyway, tomorrow's going to be the live last section of the talk with Slayer on Monday. And then I'll be back to my regular schedule on Tuesday doing the normal videos as, as, as regular. And uh, thank you so much again for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I love each and every single one of you. I just wanted to hop on here real quick and speak to you guys real quick. Because I haven't, I haven't really talked to you guys in the past couple of days since I've been posting up these talks with Slayer. So... Thank you guys. I love y'all and I hope you enjoy it. And I'll see everybody in the live tomorrow. I can't wait to see you guys there. Y'all have a great day. For the round three of our talk, man. Yes. So um you know, we were we had been talking on the telephone, uh, you know, before we started <laughs> doing this, uh doing this talk today. And um, you know, one of the things that we were talking about uh in our conversation was um you know how this YouTube community has like come together, and uh, you know it's like it's it's so beautiful to see like how everybody is like cooperating with each other, and there isn't this like competitiveness between all of us. Instead, there is this like 
uh, this connection and this, um, you know, uh, everybody is being kind and, and like I said, cooperative and trying to help each other. And we're talking about each other on each other's channels, promoting each other's channels. And it, yes. it, it's just so awesome to see, man. I, what are your thoughts on that? It's beautiful, man. It's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, um, you know, I, I've said in the past that your channel inspired me to create my channel. Um, channels like uh, Delirium Dirk, channels like Sacred Serpent, um, you know, all, all of you guys. You guys inspired me to, to create my own channel and do what I'm doing now. And I think that the whole entire community of, of the sober world is just absolutely beautiful. It is. Um, the way that because I have I've talked to you multiple times I've talked to Bat Country um, I've even talked to It's Okay to Talk I've talked to um, Are you spoken to It's Okay to Talk? I, I have a little bit I have a little bit um, and it's just it's really cool to see that there is a movement and I, I think that kind of like I sent you um, in the text the other day I really do think that there is a movement starting. Um, and I, I and the fact that we are sober people and that we're trying to be sober, I think that that plays a big role into it. Um, but we we do. We all want to have each other's backs. We all want to uplift each other. We all yeah. want to you know support each other. And that's what's so cool about it. Um, someone like Bat Country, I mean, he his videos are just, they're amazing. They're yeah, amazing. he does a really, really good job of editing his uh his his videos. They, I mean, they yeah. look pro super professional, man. Professional, man. And, yeah. and I told, I said to him, I was like, man, um, when I first met Bad Country and I was talking to him, I was like, you're gonna, your channel's gonna blow up just from your editing style alone. It's like your channel's gonna blow up. And he was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, and it ended up blowing it up. Um. I think it's awesome. I think it's absolutely freaking awesome, man. I think that the fact that we've been it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. You know, there's so many lonely people out there that they need people to come to. They need somebody to be able to rely on. And yeah. our channels, that country, your channel, my channel, um, you know, it's okay to talk, shades of clarity. Um, I was about to say, shout out to Shades of Clarity, yeah, Smiles for to, Miles, Smiles for Miles, Addicted to More, the more. Back Country, It's Okay to Talk. Um, um, Anna, I, Anna, I can't remember. I ne I can never remember her last name, but Anna, the one girl who's doing the videos, shout out to you as well. There's so it's many channels out there, and we're all coming into each other's videos, commenting on each other's videos. It's like the other, last week or whatever when I posted up those uh, talks I did with Addicted to More. Smiles for Miles came in and commented. Backcountry came in and commented. I mean, it's it's so awesome to see everybody coming in and helping each other along, promoting each other. We're we're not like I'm, I want to keep all the views for me. Instead, it's right. Hey, go check out this guy's channel. It's like like I said. Uh, Last night, I watched Bat Country's video with no idea. I did not look at the description for his video. He had right. my, my channel in the link. He did. To my channel in the description and then talked about me halfway through the video. And I was like, I had no idea. Absolutely and no idea. Shout out to Bat Country yet again. Shout out to Bat Country. Um, he's an awesome guy. Um, Stu is his real name. Okay. Um, shout, out to, shout out to Stu. I, I I love Backcountry's videos. He brought me up. He brought me up in some of his older videos as well. Um, and I think he kind of has the same mindset as we do as far as that he wants to spread awareness about this, that it's also something that helps him out. Yeah. Uh, we can all admit that. This YouTube thing, this making videos, it helps us just as much as it helps the other people Absolutely, out. Absolutely. It's a beautiful type of thing like that. And... Yeah, backcountry is awesome, man. I think that it's awesome that he is here, that he's doing, that he's spreading awareness. And I also think that it's awesome that he's on the other side of, he's across seas. I think that's cool yeah, too, because that's really that, neat. That, 
yeah, that can reach some other people that are across seas. It, it's awesome. I love what I love what Backcountry has done. I love his videos. I can relate to him. I think you could probably relate to him as well. I think, and not to cut you off, but I think I think another thing that's really neat about our community with all, everybody's different channels is that we all have our own particular style and way yes. that we go about making our videos. It's like I have my own particular style. I do my videos every single day. I sit at the same table every day in the woods and I talk. And then you've got Backcountry who does his videos with the beautiful editing style and it looks so professionally done. And then you've got Shades of Clarity who does his particular style. You know, he's chilling right. out in his right. office or whatever doing his videos. And you got you, you never know where you're going to be at. You know, you're at your, in your car <laughs> at 3 a.m. in the morning sitting in the McDonald's parking lot. And then you've yeah. got, uh, <laughs> it's, it's okay to talk who I think really, I think it's okay to talk and myself are really close on how we do our videos, except yeah. he does more of like a, uh, like a day in his life. You know, he's yeah. like hanging out in his house right. and, it's like you're almost going along with him throughout his day as he's talking about his struggles. And I really like his style a lot. I, I, I really sure. dig It's Okay to Talk style. It's like he's taking too. you along with him. Yeah, I, I, I do too. And I think It's Okay to Talk, his, his struggles have related to so many people because it's just so real. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's this is very what it authentic. Is. Yeah, it's very authentic. This I'm struggling. That's where he came out. I'm struggling. And yep. he just showed that to everybody. And so many people can relate to that because as human beings, we're all struggling. Yeah, absolutely, man. Especially with the, with alcoholism, though. It's like you see that type of stuff, and it, it helps you relate. Um, one of the main reasons that I started my YouTube channel is because I watched people like Delirium Dirk. I watch people like you. I watch people like Sacred Serpent, some of the early people um, on YouTube doing the alcoholism stuff. And it, it inspired me to show it's like we can spread awareness about this. But at the same time, about spreading awareness about it, we can be as real and authentic as we possibly can. I think that's the most important thing Yeah, is to be as real and authentic as you possibly can be, because that people are going to take the much they're going to take more value out of you being honest and authentic than they're going to be if you're just you know just making a video oh well blah blah, blah you know but it's like you need to be authentic and i think that someone like that country the fact that he makes videos talking about his rock bottoms the fact that he makes videos talking about his um binges and stuff i think that it it's amazing man because i can relate to it so much you're absolutely right. And I think one of the things, too, like yesterday in his video, he was talking about how did you did you watch the video that he posted up yesterday? Yes. So he's yep. talking and I found this very interesting. Um, and it's something I've actually thought about in the past before about how he was saying. He would like, for instance, go to an AA meeting and there's a 19 year old in there going, uh, my alcohol, my alcoholism is affecting me going to class every day. And there's like this like right. snobbery about it. Like psh, you, you don't even know what you're even talking about. You know, it's like this, like almost like a, um, like a tier level, you know what right. I mean? Right. But, yeah. but, but you shouldn't look at it that way because it doesn't matter if you've hit rock bottom or if you're just starting drinking it at the end of the day, Alcohol is going to destroy whatever path it's in. Absolutely. And those people that are in there that are 19, 20, 22, whatever age that are, man, kudos to those guys that are going ahead. Yes. And especially yes. like, like you, man, you're not 30 years old yet. You're a younger guy and you're, you're already going, I need to fix my life. Right. Kudos to you and all the younger guys who are realizing this stuff because I wish I had done that, man. And right. I didn't have the 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 foresight, the maturity level. I had none of that, man, because all I cared about was myself and the fact that I wanted to get intoxicated. And if I had if I had taken charge of my life like you are right now and trying to fix it, who knows what situation I'd be in right now, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, it could it could be a totally different world for you right now. Absolutely, and but at the end of the day, my life is what it is, and 
it ended up exactly where it needed to be. Yeah, I, I was supposed to be here. Absolutely. But Absolutely. The, but the thing is, is that, you know, one of the reasons I know that you make videos, I make videos, is to help other people realize, fix it before it becomes a serious, serious problem. And then you're trying to fix all these other problems that have been created. If you can address the, the, the problem, whatever the substance is, if you can hit that head on, attack that, figure out why you are doing these things and address it now, you won't have to walk down all the paths that we did and see the darkness that, that we've had to go through. No, because no. There's no reason to have to go through it if you don't have to. Exactly, exactly. And I think that that's, I think for a lot of, you know, my YouTube channel, your YouTube channel, so many other people's YouTube channels, I think that that's the main point, I think, is being able to realize that you do have a problem before it does have to get to the point that, like me and you, where it's yeah. like you've literally lost so much and you more than me. You know, you've lost more than me because it, it has affected your health more than me. Well, it's, completely... it's all relative, though, man. Yes, yes. It's all I, relative I saw... to our own lives. So what might be your rock bottom is, you know, might be... You know, I might be like that. What? But right. in each of our right. lives, right? What is terrible for me might not be anything for you. So, right, it, it's all relative, man. It, it it is, man. It it is, and I think that you know, you we all hit a certain point in our addiction where something does click. Um, that voice of consciousness does come up in your brain where it tells you, you know what, I can't keep doing this anymore. And I think that once we hit that point of consciousness, that's where the real journey begins as far yeah. as sobriety goes. That's where the real journey begins as far as like, what am I going to do moving forward? And I just want to tell everybody, hey, guess what? It's not an easy journey. It's no, not. And absolutely not. If you feel alone, you're not alone. There's no. there's millions of us. Look at LD. Look at myself. Look at Backcountry. Look at It's Okay to Talk. Look at Shades of Clarity. Look at every single one of these people. And so many people in the comment section, we are all, we're different people, but we're all the same people. You know what I mean? We all suffer from that same addiction, that same demon that is alcohol or whatever addiction. I don't care. You can be addicted to heroin, whatever it is. We suffer from that addiction and we suffer from it because we think for whatever reason inside of our brains that that's going to make us complete, that that's going to fix whatever issue it's a it's i think it's a completeness man i really do i think that a lot of the times when we drink we think that it's going to to fill this hole inside it of is. our lives we're trying to fill a void yes we're trying to fill that <laughs> void and if people including myself can understand that it's never going to fill that void it's a temporary void uh, well it's not a temporary void but it's a temporary filling of that void i think that we could move on in a different manner, you know, to realize that alcohol is poison. It is 100% poison. There's no benefits of it. They, The doctors have come out and said that even drinking one drink a day is unhealthy. Yeah. If people realize this stuff and we could have a different view on alcohol and alcoholism and addiction in general, I think it would, I think that it would change the whole entire view on this stuff, man. I really do. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And And the thing is, too, is that you know, alcohol is so socially acceptable, especially in our country, you know, and uh, you're the oddball if you don't drink. You are. You, you are. Know? And that's and, and we we have to change that mindset. And and I think that with this movement that all of us are trying to accomplish, we might be as small as we are between all of us. Well, I've got eleven thousand subscribers. You've got two thousand subscribers. I mean, if you add all of us up, maybe, you know, there's 200,000 subscribers between all of us. Right. But that all of us together combined, we're going to continue to grow and we're yeah. going to continue to get out there into the algorithm. And our videos are going to continue to find those people. It's going to get suggested on their feed and it's going to hit those people right at the right time. Yes. And slowly but surely, we're, we might start to change people's perspective on alcohol and that is not this simple, not dangerous, socially acceptable thing that we just do when we get around people. It's not just a social lubricant. It's not just something 
alcohol is just as bad as heroin or crack yeah. or anything else. It's not, if not worse. Yes. You know, it's funny because I was just, uh, this is kind of off topic, but I was listening to an interview the other day and it was, um, uh, a rapper, uh, I was watching, a, uh, Vlad, you know who Vlad is? Yes. Yep. I was watching an interview with a uh, boozy, you know, who boozy is. Yes. And yep. he was, he was talking about how the, the title of the videos what caught my attention. And he was saying that, uh, they were talking about fentanyl and he was saying that he wishes that, that, that people would go back to crack again because he said, I still know people that have been, that have been smoking crack for 30 years and they're still kicking it. But like this fentanyl crisis, it only takes one time and that's yep. it and they're gone, yep. you know, and it, it, because fentanyl is such a powerful drug and right. I, I feel like alcohol is right there with it. It's just the it only is. thing is, is that alcohol is. is just more socially, socially acceptable because with yes. alcohol, you can one time, just once, it could be your first time drinking. You could have get alcohol poisoning, be alone in your house, and nobody's there to help you, and that could be it. Oh, yep. How many young kids go out and get drunk for the first time at 17 years old, go back to their house, you know, back to their parents' house, go into their room, close the door, and their parents don't go check on them, and they choke yep. on their own vomit, or they die of alcohol poisoning or whatever. How, you know, how, how often is that happening? I mean, Very it, all the time. And it's, and it's like, we're not talking about this in our society, man. You know, we're focusing on these really, on these so-called hard drugs. And I'm not saying they're not. Heroin. Yeah. Man, right. They, 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 they put these labels on these other drugs. Like, oh man, you got to stay away from the heroin. You got to stay away from this. But alcohol right, right there with it. 100%. It's just as dangerous, if not more. It's, I say that often. It's, it's either, it's like you said, it's either just as dangerous or it might be on the top of the list, honestly. Yeah. But that's socially acceptable as it is. It's the one super hard drug that's socially acceptable and legal. I mean, you could take meth, you could take heroin, you could take crack, you could take all these different drugs and put them in front of it. And it still wouldn't be in, in, in its place because alcohol is legal. You can get it pretty much everywhere, man. You can pretty much go anywhere and get alcohol. Anywhere. It's it's socially acceptable. It's socially normalized, glorified to the point that, yeah, I mean, if, if you're a meth addict, if you're a heroin addict, you're going to have to go and put in some work. With alcohol, there is none of that. You know, you can just go down to the local grocery store and get yourself a bottle if you want to. I think that right behind, so number one drug that kills more people in America is tobacco. Right. Second is alcohol. I believe that. And then, and then, and then the third. So, so as far as the most dangerous drugs, alcohol is the most dangerous drugs. It causes more death than any other drug in the United States. The second one is heroin. And then crack cocaine, methamphetamine, cocaine, tobacco, amphetamine, mar marijuana. I wouldn't think that kills people, but GHB, benzodiazepines, ketamine, methadone, methadrone. But alcohol is right there at the top of the list. Yep, yep. Yeah. And they've got a graph here. I'm looking at this graph right here and it's it's got harm to the user. It's got like this graph and it's it's showing like harm to the user and everything right here. And then it says harm to others. Alcohol causes more harm to others than any other drug. So yeah. think so yeah. think about that too, about like 100%. indirectly affecting other people. Drunk drivers crashing into somebody who had absolutely nothing to do with it. They were just on their way home from work. Drunk driver yeah. crashes into them. That directly but indirectly affected somebody because they weren't the one drinking, but it's affecting all these other people. And these absolutely these absolutely. are the things that we're not talking about. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, man. This this is the stuff that we keep secret. This is the stuff that society doesn't want to look at. Yeah. This is the stuff that as a as a as a whole in society, we don't want to pay any attention to because most people just want to be able to go and enjoy their alcoholic beverages and there's a lot of people that are alcoholics that just don't want to accept their alcohol absolutely man so many of them out there so many and i think that that's a big reason why this culture continues as well and 
there's nobody to blame necessarily. There's nobody to blame. Um, I guess except for the big time alcoholic um, or alcohol manufacturers, just the same way that um, tobacco. Um, I would blame them for a lot of the stuff that they did in the past. I don't know if I would necessarily blame the alcohol company. You can't blame them. It's the money. It's a money thing. It you is. Can't blame somebody for making a dollar. You know what I mean? It it um, is. But you know the thing is too is that. They make chocolate every single day and you could eat yourself right. to death on chocolate. But, pe you know, how many Absolutely. people are doing that? The thing is, I, I think one of the biggest things is that maybe we need to take a look at this from the other side and go. What is causing so many people to want to unplug and just go numb? What is going yeah. on in our society yeah. that's causing yeah. so many people to be depressed, have anxiety? The reasons that people drink, what's causing, what's the root cause of all this? Just like we were talking about at the beginning of this, figuring out our root cause individually while we drink, but what is the root cause in our society? Is it right. the fact that everybody's trying to keep up with the Joneses and everybody's got to have the brand new, uh, well, I've got the iPhone 13, but I need the 14 because it just came out and I've got right. to go work 20 hours of overtime for the next eight weeks to pay for it. And I'm not living my life because I've got to have all these material possessions. You know, it's just, right. we're constantly being berated with advertisements everywhere you go. If you get on YouTube, right. you get on Amazon uh, or Amazon or anywhere online or Google advertisements are everywhere you look. And it's, you know, we're being yeah. programmed to think, well, I have to have this and I got to have that. And if I don't have this new thing, then I'm not going to, you know, be up to date and I'm, I'm not going to fit in. And everybody's in this rat race trying to keep up with everybody. And Absolutely. it's, it's not like back in the day, you know, when we didn't have all of this stuff. Uh, I remember growing up as a kid, man, you know, there weren't cell phones, there were, weren't beepers, there weren't, things were just so much simpler back then. And, uh, you know, there were still material possessions that people were chasing after, but it's, nothing like it is today you right. know and the constant scrolling on your phone you know that's another thing that people get addicted to you know not only are they addicted to alcohol but then on top of it they're on facebook doing this their, all yeah, day long and they set these sites up for us to become addicted i just watched this video the other day of these kids they did a compilation video of all these children that are in their sleep toddlers that are in their sleep trying to swipe in their sleep, they're just laying there swiping, 